I just had one of the strangest encounters. This is going so good. Come on. Hi. Yeah. Hey guys, Dusty Becker at Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for watching us. I just had one of the strangest encounters um, with bison. And I've only been doing this four years. I have to tell you about this. So I came out, I pulled up to the to the front, to our front entry. Brooks and I came over here to, to check Elsa and feed her and do a couple of things, do a little herd check, make sure they're all doing good. And one of these yearling heifers uh, was just out in the pasture, and it's in the middle of the day, it's afternoon, uh, in the middle of the pasture, laying down. And I'm like, and all the rest of them were in the shade. And so, threw me off a little bit. I honked at her, and I didn't see her move anything. That first initial thought of something bad um, has occurred, went through my mind. Well, I drove out there, and I drove the ATV up to her, completely woke her up. Her eyes were closed when I pulled up to her woke her up and she didn't even move her her tail went up and basically uh i was able to go up and touch her i have no idea what's wrong with her come on So now I pulled down to the pasture and I'm trying to find her and see exactly where she's at. I, I looked at her tag number, she's 1506, and I, I finally got her to stood up. Haas came over and checked her to see how she was doing. These are very healthy yearlings. And so um, they look good and they've got water. I've been feeding them. Uh, I put out a bale of hay. So I don't know what was wrong with her, but I got her to stand up. And I basically uh, went over and touched her and pet her, and she never moved, never flinched this anything. This is the wildest thing I've seen since I've owned bison. She don't feel good. Poor thing. Never been able to come up and touch one like this. But she got up. Oh, Hoss is giving her some love. Not sure what's wrong with her, though. I had to meet a guy, uh, the NRCS guy, to talk about some uh, burn plan, and so I had to leave, so I went and tried to meet him, but I didn't have time to mess with her, and I pulled back up here as soon as I could, and uh, she was gone, and must have moved with the herd because they came down here to the pond, I'm sure, to get some water and and, and uh, bathe a little bit, and uh, she's moved with them, but I just got to find her. It's hard to get up close and, and see their numbers, so...
All right, guys, we are out in the pasture, me and my little helper here. But um, I, this is the strangest thing uh, I've encountered with a bison. And I've never been able to go up to a bison like this. And she's obviously uncomfortable. I don't know what is going on with her. She's just out here alone by herself. But uh, what I'm doing with this yearling, um, this 1506 yearling, is I called Doc. I told him about the symptoms, what I saw. I told him I was able to go up to her and actually touch her and pet her. And she's just acting very strange. And uh, so we kind of went through those symptoms of just kind of, she's kind of staggering around and doing all that. So it's just not, not normal. And so he said, uh, she's obviously got a fever, doesn't feel good, obviously has separated herself from the herd because she doesn't feel good he said she's probably got a fever and whatnot but he told me a medication that i could give her but you got to have a prescription for that medication so i'm not sure what i'm going to do about that and, and to get her to get a prescription for it which means i'd have to catch her load her up in the trailer take her to the vet there's one just right here locally like literally a mile down the road maybe a mile away from me and uh, they would get me the prescription, the shot. Um, but I called them and talked to them and tried to do that. So I understand you gotta go in to the vet clinic. It's just like us, you gotta go to the doctor, get the prescription and then go get it. It's the same thing with these animals uh, with a certain dosage. Now there's things that we can buy over the counter that would help her. A doc told me to get something that would really help her. So, so anyways, what I'm gonna do is uh, I asked him about um, besides her behavior i said could it be a, the water from a pond there is a pond that there um that they have that is getting very low obviously you know what's going on here it's very dry um the pond is getting low and and what they do in that pond if you're live if you're a livestock person you know what they do in ponds they poop they pee in it they play in it and they drink out of it and uh this goes back to my water tank videos uh that we did at mom and kevin's and right now obviously the ponds play a, a very big role here at the Ponderosa. But when it comes to times like this, you're like, man, those uh, automatic waters would be awesome. Which I have one up here in the corral. But where the yearlings are, they don't have an automatic water. And we don't we haven't established those water systems yet here. And, and we may do that. We may talk about that in the future. Having the ponds is nice. But in this case, um, when they get low and there could be some and in the heat. The heat uh, can can play a big part on that as well, uh, on the ponds and the water and algae and all that stuff. So I asked him about that and he said that could be a possibility too as well. So the first thing I did was I've got a water tank with a pump already hooked up to it. It's an automatic pump that I use. It's a float valve. I'm gonna put it over there, right over by the blue feeder. Brooks and I went and bought 300 feet of hose and this is the quickest fastest way to get fresh water to them it's got a valve on it so i don't have to fill it up all the time so that's what i'm going to do real quick i'm going to dump this water trough and then i'm going to uh, clean it out a little bit and then i'm going to take it over all the chickens brooks's chickens <laughs> getting so big i'm going to take it um and uh put it over here and run the hose basically right here from the corner uh, of the barn where all these critters are uh, and go all the way over there where Kevin currently is hanging out with Brooks and uh, that's the idea anyways. 
try to get them some fresh water. What are you doing, Elsa? Hey, Elsa. So in the meantime, because I don't have a prescription and I can't give her a, uh, a vaccination or a shot um, right now, and uh, basically I think it was a strong antibiotic is what Doc was trying to get me to get. So I may be running to Stratford to get a, uh, a shot for that specific shot. So in the meantime, because this is afternoon, evening right now, and when all this happened and discovered it, I'm just trying to act as fast as I can. And I noticed the pond is not in good shape. So I'm trying to do what I can uh, to maybe prevent the others from getting sick as well in case it is the water. I'm not saying it's the water, but um, just something I control really quickly and get taken care of. And they need fresh water as it is, but sometimes it's very hard to get them fresh water. And right now the conditions, they need it, I think. And so to, uh, to lessen the precautions and lessen the risk of them getting sick, if that's the case, if it was the water, who knows, um, then we're gonna get them fresh water. So I'm just doing what I can right now. Counting them? Is there a particular place I should put it? Maybe up next to this? Okay. All right, we'll put it up here next to this. Ready to go. Huh? Pretty Oklahoma sunset. See the sun? It's oh. pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Make sure our connection is good. Yeah. See if they find it. Yeah, then we can. They weren't going to jump the other way, right? Yeah, they did. It'll come up here and you can you can touch it. Just a little bit. I know it's late guys, but um it's getting kinda dark. But uh Kevin was helping me. I wanted him to see this uh yearling heifer, so we went out in the pasture and found her and uh conditions aren't looking very good. <laughs> here comes a big herd. You brought you guys probably can't see him running, but yeah, they care. I just poured some cubes out for them. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <clears throat> it's not looking good uh, for the yearling. And uh, what's crazy is this yearling is really healthy. Skin is great. No <clears throat> outside conditions or any signs. The first signs I saw was today at about 2 o'clock. And she was laying down. And obviously when I got up to pet her, it was the wildest thing, and I knew something was wrong instantly because these yearlings over there are still a little skittish of me. Um, they're getting used to me, but when you can go up and pet one that's not used to that, you know it's a red flag. It's something's going on. Um, so, I don't know. Something, I'm thinking gut or something poisonous. I'm not really sure, but uh, something that she got or whatever it is happened very, very fast. 
and uh, I saw it at two o'clock today was the first time um, the signs and uh, ever since then it's gone downhill very fast and so um, tomorrow morning I'm not sure what I'll wake up to but right now to be honest with you it doesn't look very good so I'll keep you guys updated thank you guys for watching we'll see you soon